de los 10 equipos que hay, o sea, cualquiera le veo ganando y perdiendo. We gotta clear heads from last split so we can perform better. I just wanna be the best possible player I can be individually and perform the best possible way we can be as a team. You will be one of the teams of people who speak positively about in summer split. We just need to find a kind of consistency to give it our all in every game. We do still want to make it to Worlds, even if a lot of people think it's unrealistic, we have a really positive outlook. Coming back from his route was a boost of our confidence. Now we know we can do it again. You have to like basically prove yourself that your LCS is worthy. I don't feel any pressure to perform. There's no need to be scared. There is no expectation. There's only play. Day two of the summer split here in our studio in Berlin, Germany. As you can see, our fans are ready to go as they usually are. Our Unicorns of Love fan who was there yesterday as well. Ryu uh, getting a lot of fan support as well as a fanatic cheerleader. I don't think, uh, well, they always need cheering on, but they're doing very well as is. And their quick shot is setting up for his interview later with Crawley. And here's H2K entering the studio looking for that second victory here on day two as they will be fighting versus Origen in game one. There they are, the brand new team out of Challenger. Yesterday, a victory versus Giants. We'll see what they do today. I'm Ifyo Shog Zaporter here behind the analyst desk with Challenger Series shoutcaster James Stress O'Leary and the newest member of our EU LCS team, Mitch Krepo Voorspoels. Well, how was your first day? Feeling ready? I'm so ready for this. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, with just five games on the book so far, that was like, this could be a little bit more intense. I'm so ready, Shock. Yes. Let's get going. All right. Let's see where the teams stand as of now. Copenhagen Wolves, Elements, Fnatic, H2K, and Origen at the top of the tables with a 1-0. and And the rest trailing behind only at 0-1, and though. Well, um, we talked to the players a lot yesterday. Obviously, they don't look into it that much. We don't either. But we do see a couple of trends developing. Maybe, first and foremost, Fnatic, fantastic in the spring split. And, uh, well, after MSI looking easy even stronger. Yeah, they, they look just really solid. They upgraded uh, Steelback uh, to Reckless, and you see, I think Huni really showed up here. Yeah, I think the biggest thing about this game was the fact that uh, we talked so much about Reckless, we talked so much about him rejoining the team. Uh, the fact is, every single member of Fnatic had a great game in yesterday's first opening game of the summer split against the Unicorns of Love. It did not look like the Fnatic Unicorns of Love matchup that we saw at the end of the spring split. Yeah, and Fabian, uh, um, or who we talked to here, also said, well, we have them figured out now. It took us a split, but we got it, so that is hopeful for them at least. And then the Copenhagen Wolves shutting down SK Gaming in, well, something that I didn't expect that they would shut him down and this hard especially maybe from the side from SK Gaming as well. Yeah SK Gaming is claiming that it didn't work last split so they went back to something that worked last year but you have to realize that everything around you is constantly evolving and the average level in the European LCS has drastically gone up. SK can't just go back to what used to work because it will simply not work anymore. Other teams are better at rotations, they're better at macro level gameplay and to be honest, individually, SK did not impress me yesterday. Yeah, and individually stressed the Copenhagen Wolves as we were criticizing a couple of them beforehand, but really showing up. Yeah, really showing up. They got comfort picks in their first game. Uh, honestly, they looked a lot more like a unit than we've seen the Copenhagen Wolves. Didn't fall into some of the same pitfalls where they slowed down in the mid game. So it was a convincing game. But again, with every single game that was played yesterday, it's the first game of the season. Still, everything can happen in the rest of the 17. Yeah, let's learn going into the rest of the split. And then some trends we saw yesterday are particularly one Siver not picked once, not banned once. That is really odd. Yeah, so b before yesterday started, I, I was watching a lot of Shine Night games and I had the stat line ready. You know, Siver 16 and 4, you know, snowballing a lot of these matches there in the LPL and no picks, no bans, and just didn't happen. And I, I don't know why, because he's such a good tempo AD carry. Yeah, but meanwhile, at the same time, a couple of our games, we saw the rise of the reworked Ash. So uh, I'm not going to go ahead and say that it's going to be in every single game, but Reckless certainly feels it's very strong. Uh, interested to see how Ash is going to play out today in our games. Yeah, definitely incredibly strong. Well, you guys at home also took note of yesterday's action and made sure to let us know what you thought was an LCS big play. We got this from some at lol objections. That Eddie, sorry, Gosu Pepper, save on Forgiven was so slick. This was your number one LCS big play. 
like uh, some action on bot lane. Wow, this is a 2v2. It's going to turn into a 2v3. We do see the hyperkinetic position reversal. A good teleport from JWoww is potentially going to set up a kill here. That is a beautiful flash lantern from Gosu Pepper. He keeps forgiving alive. Yeah, there's a, a couple cool subtleties to that play. Forgiven heals to get the mini speed up, flashes to get the lantern. Then Edward, or Gosu Pepper now, realizes that if a given lands on a spot where he gets pulled to, he's actually going to die. So he basically uses his own flash to count twice. One for him, one for Forgiven, and they got out there. But I think they went right They in. went back in. <laughs> they went back in afterwards, so not worth. But yeah, uh, Eddie well, too good, yeah. Good, good 2v2 play so far uh, from them. I think they're, gonna, they're a really good bot lane in isolated in 2v2. But they have a very telegraphed style, right? Forgiven, he brings this SK style back to Gambit. One, three, one, nice rotations, but... It gets predictable. Yeah, we'll see if any adaptations come in today. Remember, for you guys at home, send us your OP moments as they happen. Tweet at LL Esports. Use that hashtag LCS. You know the drill. Uh, LCS Big Place, rather. Or LCS for anything else. Now, we'll definitely see the standings change today as we bring you five more games, starting with Orihana versus H2K in just a few minutes. Then Fnatic will be taking on SK Gaming, and we're we'll closing out the week with Elements versus the Unicorns of Love. A lot of great matchups here today. But before we get into our very first match, we do want to touch base with you guys at home once again. Tweet at LOL Esports and let us know which summer split roster change do you think will have the biggest impact and why? Well, panel, negative, positive? Take I think one that's still up in the air is, uh, to me, the elements changes. It's not just one singular change. I guess it's the whole roster change, basically. Still a lot of questions around for them. They had a good showing yesterday. If they can continue that performance throughout the split, maybe we'll see elements looking for uh, a, a top of the table finish. Yeah, they finally got a good support down there, so <laughs> maybe it can finally happen for elements. But in terms of impact and, and one of the interesting roster changes that I want to track is Candy Panda for SK. So it's one change, one player, but the entire style of the team, everything that Forgiven brought in terms of play style, you know, just macro level play as well as individually in the bot lane, that's gone. SK wants to return back to a totally different form. Is it going to work this split? It's too early to rule them out uh, based off one game because based of one is just nothing yet. But I just want to wait till week three, week four and see if SK style is actually going to work or if they have to adapt to something new and if they can. Yeah, you definitely have a close eye on that uh, yeah. team. It'll be interesting to see how they evolve. Well, remember to tweet at LL Esports and include that hashtag LCS this time around so we can check out some of your answers later today and talk them through right here. For now, though, we're going to go on to our first matchup between two of the LCS's newest teams, fresh out of Challenger, Orichlin and H2K, and they are only in their second split in the LCS. We're going to start, though, by taking a look at the newbies for Orichlin on the blue side. It is so as amazing. ex Peke, Niels Mithy, and their coach, Leduc. Yesterday, well, they had a slow start in their matchup versus Giants, but as they echoed also here on the desk, it was kind of also the reflection of what they were mentally looking at the season. As they started off slow, didn't want to make any mistakes and are just keeping a clear head. Yeah, very, very average expectations for them, and I like that. You don't want to get too ahead of yourselves. And it showed in the game playing. Slow, but secure. They knew they were probably the better mid-game team than Giants, so they kept it tight in the early game, waited for the mid-game. They made one slip-up where Pepinero was managed to basically get in behind them and flank, but they learned from that. Peke with a beautiful binding, and the person that stood out the most for me was Miffy. I would definitely agree with that, which from Challenger, Mithy always looked good. He just never really was kind of the guy that he was, was in every up. single <laughs> engage, making sure uh, that Origin came out ahead. Uh, honestly, I feel very similarly to your comments about uh, the SK changes, week three, week four. I think that's where we'll see Origin really get a massive boost in confidence. Once they've learned exactly where they feel like they are against most of the LCS teams, they'll turn things up. They'll start turning up the early game pressure. And once they're confident, we saw it in Challenger. As soon as they know they're the better team, they'll close out games pretty quick. Yeah, and on the side of strategy picks and bans, nice with that flex pick Morgana showing that there's also a good background there in terms of strategy. It was only one game, of course. It might just be one thing. Well, we've only had one game to judge, and it was really good. Remind, reminding us of the of the MSI final where uh, the Morgana into the LeBlanc pick. Pick it played a little differently, but I liked it. I like flex picks a lot because they give you so much versatility. And once you use them once, your opponents are always going to be scared that you might do it in the next rotation, next draft. You know, is this a flex pick? Is this played in one single world? You, you can fake flex picks almost because people will eventually not know whether your top laner or mid laner can play it as long as you keep the information hidden. And it's really, really good to do in drafting. Definitely. And it's something that Origin in Challenger, again, I'm going back to all of the games we casted. So many games, it'd be Morgana lock in first rotation. And you didn't know, was it Mithy? Was it Peke? Or even was it so 
Tower was back in the top lane. Mm -hmm. They ran so many flex picks all the way along the, the rift, so they, they certainly have a lot of versatility. Yeah, definitely good start for them, but now what a test. They are going to be up against uh, H2K in this one, H2K on the red side with Odo Amne, Lulex, Ryu, Hyarnan, Kissing, and Prowly. Well, playing their Hallmark style, uh, the same 10 to 20 minute power spikes that led to success in the entirety of the spring split. And as Kissing also said here, well, we're just listening to Prowly, just doing the same thing. We don't know what they have up their sleeve, but that was promising. It certainly was promising, and another thing that has been promising over... It, it feels like the whole of the spring split, but nobody really talked about it, is Odo Amne up in that top lane. Uh, we focus so much on Kasing, on Prali, and that effect. Odo Amne has quickly become one of the real playmakers on H2K. You look at his game yesterday uh, on uh, 857 damage per minute, the highest of any player mm -hmm. so far, and that's an incredible stat for a top laner. He's always getting himself in the mix, and he's always active from the top. Yeah, and 857 damage, that is even more more impressive if you know that there was an AP Kogma played by Power of Evil <laughs> later in the day because it's also dependent on the champions and to do that on a NAR, that is just uh, knocking your socks off. Uh, other people in there, Ryu, who has really come to shine in the playoffs with eight solo kills. Yesterday he chose for Fizz and he just had the liberty to actually do what he wanted but executed it correctly. Yeah, this roam from Ryu basically shows up in the top lane. Notice that this one melee minion here is still there taking tank tower shots so he goes in on Steve. Steve has no flash so watch what Ryu does. Comes down with the Playful Trickster, but carries on that damage with his Flash. Switches the aggro to Odo Wamne in the meanwhile, and a really solid execution. And my biggest question here is, how is a Fizz on level 3 to 4 allowed to roam when he's in the Cassiopeia matchup? I wasn't exactly sure, so I talked to some other mid laners. I was like, how does this matchup go? And 1 to 6, Cassiopeia should punish and poke the Fizz. Even if he goes in with ENQ, lands all the damage, it's not enough to kill you. You can counteract that damage so you can put pressure back. At level 6, this matchup swings completely the other way. But I feel Nuketok dropped the ball. And Ryu, I really like that he finds this opening. Yes, he can maybe be happy with getting a few extra CS and having no pressure in lane. But he uses that opening to go top. Punish the no flash uh, on uh, Steve there. Beautiful execution. Yeah, beautiful execution on H2K as a whole as well. Finally, if we take a closer look at this uh, matchup, H2K is a team with a very defined style that is working extremely well for them. But actually for Orihan, um, they don't set too high of an expectations, and we don't actually can't really pinpoint them in terms of style. We know some certain picks and some kind of people that step up to carry here and there, but on the macro level, we don't really know what their game plan is going to be as the season progresses. And I think a big reason for that is because when you look at a lot of the challenger teams that they have faced over the last split, no challenger team truly has a defined style, uh, and it's very open play. There's a lot of... Uh, I don't want to say misplays, but when it comes to strategy, it's not always quite as clean cut as in the LCS. So Origin didn't have to develop that. Style. Yeah, and, and you don't always get punished. You get away with a lot of things yeah. in the Challenger series, and you develop these habits. And we'll see how uh, flexible Origin is as a team, because sometimes you'll have to adapt. Some things that work in Challenger simply will not work in LCS. And they might even work against the low-level teams, but then once you, you get against the real dogs like Fnatic, that's when you got to be really flexible or you'll lose. Yeah, H2K, also a real dog in my book. And for a closer yep. look into the strategy behind H2K, we're going to check in with Quickshot, and he's standing by with their coach, Prolly. Thank you very much, guys. I am joined here by Prolly, coach of the spring split, I might add. No pressure there, buddy, in the summer split. Let's start off by talking about how strong you guys were yesterday. Came out the gate swinging against Rockat. Let's briefly talk about how you felt that game went, as well as what your opinion is on the LCS teams after one day of games. So that game, the first 10 minutes, was actually really uncharacteristic of us. I thought the team was just kind of getting more used to the stage and then the level one debacle with bot lane kind of snowballed. So definitely the first 10 minutes were really weird for us. We hadn't really played that style of game. So it's definitely a new thing we got to look at and kind of revamp, you know, what happens if this happens again, guys. But uh, after that, I think we had a really good mid and late game. Everything kind of went the way it was supposed to in scrims. And the reason why it was surprising to see this was because in scrims, we never did anything like this correctly. This was all kind of taught and shown in scrims with replays. But when we actually came to LCS, they actually did it correctly. When in scrims, the game's always thrown by doing something funny. So they always stress me out during scrims, but they're, it's always relieving to see them play LCS. Well, very nicely done. Congratulations on the victory there. Let's talk about the team. You've talked about scrims and training mentality and techniques. It worked on stage, didn't all fair. Something else that H2K had a problem with was adapting to the Cinder Hulk meta. It's been quite a while since those changes came into place. How do you feel your team is performing now in the current state of the game? Well, the Cinder Hulk changes were a big blow to us because, yeah, one, we were slow to it, and two, it was a really big buff to Cinder Hulk players. So it was a meta shift in a really big way. And currently, the meta is shifting 
kind of slowly. I think almost one role at a time it's shifting. So I think right now for us, it's really important to find kind of like our team meta, what we do best. And if another team kind of finds a model that we can follow, then we might take parts of that. But realistically, it's more of finding out the fundamentals that make our team work and kind of build off of that. Well, fair play. It's fundamentals that got you the third place in the spring split. I want to talk about some the team you are about to face right now, Origin on the opposite side. Straight out of Challenger Series, how do you approach a team that is relatively fresh to the LCS stage despite knowing the players for an exceptional amount of time? Well, I think not being able to play at an LCS, uh, like the LCS caliber teams, I think is really hard for a Challenger team to get because there's certain game aspects that you don't really learn, kind of like ending the game correctly is really hard for a challenger team to learn because it's almost impossible to find it in scrims. No one will play like they do on stage in scrims. So them jumping back into the LCS scene, I think they are going to be a little rough towards the late game. And I think a really safe game plan going into this game would be, you know, play safe laning phase and go to mid late and just beat them strategically. But I really don't want to approach it that way. I really want to approach it like we need to take this game from the beginning to the end. So. I really didn't stretch any caution to the players, and I really want them to go out and show how strong our early game has gotten and kind of take the game from there. Well, thank you so much. You've heard it from Prolly first. Go ham in the laning phase. You can join your team for picks and bands and pass on that note once again. Thank you, Prolly. Um, now, as we go to the casters to take us into game one here of day two, we actually sat down to hear from Kasing and how he was turning heads before his inaugural split with the H2K. I remember playing against Kazing before he he was in Gamers 2 before he joined the H2K, and I was telling my team, uh, this guy is really good, and I kept telling them. And then when he joined H2K, I was like just asking myself, wow, this guy, you know, how can he change a team so much? And so yeah, I, I definitely have a lot of respect for for all of them, and especially Kazing. Hello, everybody. I'm Devin Pyrotechnics Young, and of course, I am joined by my color caster and part time bard enthusiast, Krepo Forschbills. How's it going, Mitch? Great to be here. <laughs> Good to have you, man. Uh, and a nice quick running over here. Uh, we're about to get ready into this first game H2K versus Origin. It's going to be a big test for both these squads, I think. Yeah, I think Origin has less to lose in this matchup. Uh, personally, so H2K pretty much have to win as Origin, the underdogs. Both played a really slow uh, style usually. H2K known for the slow style yesterday. Okay, they had a little quicker pace, you know, those dives on Steve on the top lane. Origin, very tempered, but I think they need to turn it up a notch if they want to challenge H2K. Yeah, I, I think they definitely have to, and they can't afford to make the same mistakes they made against Giants. H2K just won't allow them to get away with that.